Hi everyone, welcome to my new series called Tuesday Tutorials. This is going to be jewelry making and this was a requested video. It's the first in a series and since it's the first, what we're going to what I'm going to show you today is my 10 most used tools in jewelry making. But before I get into those and you're seeing some of them here, um, I want to make a disclaimer that I've only been making jewelry since um, 2012, I'll say, the end of 2011, and that's my very, very beginning. Uh, and I took a lot of classes at places like Beadfest, uh, which is a, um, it's like a, <laughs> uh, an event, a several day event where they hold classes and things, and then they sell beads and whatnot. So I took some there, I taken some online, I've taken some from Michael's when they were offering some classes. Um, and actually the, my first classes were from Michael's but at Beadfest. So anyway, I am not, a pro I, I have a business but I'm not really a professional jewelry maker. I might be a professional beader and there is a difference in my mind. Um, several types of jewelry making. There's um, when I say beading, you can do wire work with beads, you can do bead stringing, um, you can do bead weaving, those are three varieties, but when I talk about jewelry making, I'm talking about stone setting and um, thing, you know, metal work, silver smithing, gold smithing, that kind of thing. I am not going to get into that. I was trying to work my way to learning this. I've taken a couple classes at Beadfest and things on silversmithing, how to make a ring, a setting, a stone setting, and I can do it, but I can't do it in my house. I have to do it out on my enclosed patio, weather permitting, which is probably about 20 days out of the year because it's either too hot, too cold, too humid, whatever. And right now my patio is full of junk and I can't even I can't light a torch out there because the house would start on fire. Anyway, so I'm not going to get into that. I will get into wire work. I'll get into bead weaving. Um, I'll get into bead stringing. I may even get into some kumihimo braiding um, and also some paracord um, weaving, kind of, you know, making some paracord bracelets, simple things like that. Um, memory wire. It's all though with beads and um, wire or materials, okay? Uh, stringing materials. So I'm going to go over my favorite tools for doing those kinds of jewelry making. My first, my favorite pliers. This is a round nose plier. It's an essential for making all your loops, your plain loops, your wire, um, wire wrapped loops. Um, you can use it to make um, findings, as in like hook and eye clasps. Um, you can use it to make um, various shapes of links and things. And there are other tools that can aid you as well, but a good round nose plier. They're round on both sides all the way around and they're tapered typically. That is my number one. And I'll show you some alternatives a little bit later, but I'm just going to go through my top 10 right now, that round nose. Next is chain nose pliers. These are sometimes mistakenly called flat nose because they're flat on the inside, but these are not flat nose pliers. These are chain nose pliers. They're pointier at the tip, and that is because people who do chain mail have to get into small spaces. They need the pointier tip they're rounded on the top and bottom, but flat on the inside. Those are called chain nose. And these are my two very most favorite pair of pliers because they fit my hands perfectly. They're smaller. I have smaller hands. If you have bigger hands, these might not be good for you. So my suggestion is when you're buying your first set of pliers, try and get them in person at a place maybe that has some out that you can say, you know, can I hold those for a minute or test them and see how they fit? Because it's really important. These are ergonomic. They have a place for my thumb to go. Um, they spring nicely. These are by Beetalon. And I don't 
I'm sure I got them at Michael's, but I don't know. I think you can get them online now. I'm not sure if Michael's still sells them or not. I haven't checked lately. So those are my two most used pliers. My third most used plier is this um, bent nose plier. This is a little sparkle one. It's not as ergonomic as the others, but it also, again, has a small handle. You want these to fit your hands because if you're doing a lot of this work, it can be stressful and, you know, you could get carpal tunnel or whatever if you don't take care of yourself. So make sure the fit is good. Now, what I like about the bent nose, um, first of all, if you're doing things with jump rings, opening and closing, you need another pair of pliers and preferably not round nose because they'll bend your, your rings out of shape. Both pairs of pliers, whichever you use, could be two pair of chain nose, could be a, a chain nose and a bent nose, and I'll show you another pair that would work, but they have to be flat on the inside to hold the jump ring properly. These are nice because they can get into smaller spaces as well. Um, I like them for when I'm doing wire wrapped loops to squish the little ends in because it gets in closer than this one does. So that's my number three. Number four is flat nose. Now these, I want to show you the difference. These are definitely flat. You see they're flat here. They're not uh, rounded on the top. They're flat on the top. They're flat on the inside and um, flat on the edge and these are rounded on the top they go to a point um, they are flat on the inside what I mostly use these for right now is when I make my earring wires myself which I actually prefer to do um, this makes that little twist on the bottom of the ear wire in the back of your ear um, just perfectly evenly spaced so I use that mostly for that but I could also use them for helping do jump rings or I could use these two to do jump rings either one so it's a it's another kind of a flat inside plier um, so these are my four most used and with all your pliers you have to have good cutters and these two are my favorite these are flush cutters meaning this side would be the side that cuts your wire flush, meaning straight up and down. And um, that's important for many things, especially if you are making your own jump rings or something, you want the cut to be straight up and down. Um, there's also shears that do that. Now these are called micro shear flush cutters um, because they can get into small spaces. I really prefer these when I'm doing my earrings and fine wire work. Um, and they are good up to 14 gauge, which is a pretty thick wire, but I prefer not to use these for anything past 18 gauge. These are made by Zoron and these are called maxi shear flush cutters. I don't use them as much, but they also go to 14 gauge. They do not get into small spaces. So if you're working with a little bit heavier wire and you don't need to get in a teeny tiny space, these would be good. Um, they're my two favorite cutters. I had these when I first began. And honestly, I filmed this video once and um, I tried cutting even just beading wire with these and they no longer cut. And unfortunately, I have two pair of them. So I recommend if you, you can go a little cheaper on these pliers, but do not go cheap on your cutters because you need them to last a long time. And if you take care, good care of your cutters, they will last a long time. The thing is, make sure you don't use these kind of pli uh, cutters to cut with uh, memory wire because they will absolutely ruin your cutters. For memory wire, this is my one, two, three, four, sixth thing. You need a good pair of memory wire cutters. And there are a couple varieties, but this one has a little space here. It has like a hole and it closes and it just cuts down and it cuts your memory wire really well. Memory wire is really heavy, like steel um, wire. It's not your normal like copper coated wire or sterling silver wire or something like that. And it will mar or knit, um, chip your regular cutters. So be sure if you're going to be doing memory wire to get a memory wire cutter. Very important. So that is number six. 
Number seven is crimping pliers. You only need one pair. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different fancy kinds now, but and I'll show you more about these. But crimping pliers, if you're making strung necklace, necklaces and bracelets, are essential. Um, they have a little, like a U-shaped thing with a dip in it in this second hole right here where my thumb is. Um, that is where you put a crimp tube or crimp bead through. I'm trying to get it to focus. This, there, maybe there. And then the front hole up here is where you would round that crimp bead or tube after you've crimped it. And we'll get into that more, but if you're going to do be, be doing bead stringing, you need a pair of crimping pliers. Actually, if you're just beginning, you, you don't. You can just squish the crimp bead or crimp tube carefully and then um, try and um, use your pliers to bend it. This just makes it easier to do it and it gets it right more of the time than doing it the other way. But if you're just starting, can't afford crimping pliers, you can use your chain nose pliers to crimp. Okay. So another tool I use all the time when I make my own ear wires in particular is a wire rounder. This is called a cup burr. Um, so if you're going to be doing things like making ear wires, this is an essential tool. And what it does is when you make your ear wire, you know the little piece that goes through your ear where well, you don't want it to be scratching your ear. So this, you take the end of the wire and you turn it, you're supposed to turn it one direction only, and it smooths out that rough cut on the end of the wire so it doesn't hurt your ear. So I use that all the time when I make ear wires. And then last, my number 10, is beading needles. Uh, if you do any kind of bead weaving, um, you need some good beading needles. These are tulip beading needles, number 11. They come in sizes like 10, 11, and 12, and a lot of um, bead weaving tutorials will tell you use a size 10 or a size 12 because it needs to be able to go through the beads with the thread multiple times. I prefer 11 because it tends to work in either of those that say size 10 or 12, and these are flexible needles um, that don't break easily. I've never had one break. I've had them bend and I still use them when they bend. Like you can see this one is bent. There you go. These are not. I haven't used these yet and I still use them uh, until they get really misshapen. Now the thing about beading needles different from regular sewing needles is the eye is really small and you will most likely need a magnifying glass to thread it and there are tricks to threading it and I haven't done it for a while I'm not going to do it today but these are my favorite beading needles tulip size um, 11 but I also have the 10s and 12s and there's other ones called shorts and there's longs and but some of them are very stiff these are flexible these are my favorites okay so and then these are the big eye beading needles um, that you can actually split them open and put your cord through. And I actually did just use this in when I made the button earrings, the little rainbow ones with the Eslon cord because I had to go up through a bead and back down and I could not get the cord ends through without the use of the big eye needle. So that is another thing. So those are my top 10. Now there are some other things that you probably should have. Let me clear these off. Um, or you may want to have, I should say. And um, one of the things for wire work is a pair of nylon jaw pliers. And what that's good for is, let's say you, you know, that's for this kind of a wire, not a beading wire. Um, let's say you have a little bend in your wire or, or you just want to straighten it out. You just run this through the nylon jaw pliers and without marring the wire, it straightens it out and gets the kinks out. So that is what they're for. Another way you could do that is if you had a soft, like a jewelry cleaning cloth, you could just use your fingers and the cleaning cloth 
you don't really want to use some people just use their fingers but then you get all black from the dirt on the wire or whatever I don't know I prefer using the nylon jaw pliers um, you could get variations on the pliers I just showed you for example this is a chain nose plier but it's like a um, a needle needle nose chain nose um, and it's a real skinny tip real skinny body for getting into small places if you do a lot of wire work and chain mail kind of things um, and these are a different version of the round nose but they're only round down to here just at the tip honestly I don't use these very often <laughs> um, either one of them I use my other ones and one thing I wanted to show you on the chain nose a lot of people I've seen lately doing videos are using the ones like this. These, this is a pair I got at a yard sale. I don't use them. I used them once and then I realized they have ridges on them here. And I don't, see, you can hear it when I run my nail across it. There's ridges there and some people say, yeah, that's better to grip it with. Well, yeah, if you're doing construction work or something or electrician work, great. Not for jewelry making. It mars your wire so I would not advise it every class I've had said don't use that maybe if you're getting into um, like um, hmm, what do you call that um, torching torching silver smithing or metal smithing maybe you could use it for some of that because you want old pliers for some of that but not for your beading and stuff this is another pair of chain nose it's just a longer nose and that may come in handy in some applications I honestly rarely grab for these unless I need another pair of chain nose and they happen to be close by but you could use those um, this one I grab for all the time for making basic loops for earrings or whatever I can use this and if you want consistent loops you just mark your pliers with a sharpie marker or similar permanent marker it'll eventually rub off at the same place and then you know to always make you loops at that place but for consistency I really like using this you get six shapes and I don't um, okay this is by Euro tool but there's other brands similar so it has six different sizes of loops and you can make all your loops on whatever project you're working on the same size or if you always want your earring loops you use the smallest loop here I love this tool I use it quite often so I just didn't have 11 <laughs> favorites uh, you might also need a bead reamer um, this is a fine one I don't use this often but once in a while you'll get a gemstone and the hole is not drilled properly or all the way through and you may need to carefully ream it it's got like a twisted end on it um, pearls sometimes are like that you have to be careful doing that with pearls though or gemstones they could break so I don't use that very often but once in a while these are um, Leslie Rogowski was selling these at a, at a bead fest one time and they were called the best little scissors ever ever these are great for bead weaving for cutting your um, stringing material I love them I have two pair of them uh, one in my bag to go and one to have around and let's see I already told you about memory wire and crimpers and another thing if you do bead weaving is some glue uh, and or um, cabochons you know gluing cabochons in GS hypo cement is a precision for just getting a little touch of glue in like if you have a knot on something this one's probably old and pretty yeah, it's still liquid in there I can feel it anyway it's clear um, it has a fine point applicator and I prefer it when I'm working with like string or cord or something and the other one of course is E6000 now this does have a strong odor and someone recently told me about E7000 I have not tried that yet but they said it works about the same and it doesn't have the bad odor so I'm all for that but I have a couple packs of this I need to use first um, this also dries clear it's flexible it's photo safe it's washer and dryer safe um, which you don't really need for jewelry made in the USA anyway this is like a jewelry maker go-to adhesive good for gluing your cabochons into your um, settings and things like that 
so that is another favorite and one more thing two more things actually this one is not really a favorite of mine but a lot of people use them this is a, a uh, tool to open and close jump rings and when i go through jump rings in a future video i'll i'll have practiced up using this so i can show you but i personally don't use it it's got um four different slots uh, a lot of people doing chain mail i think use it because they open and close a lot of jump rings and they can keep one hand free that way but i don't prefer it i prefer i'm just what i'm used to is using my pliers and for stringing some kind of bead stoppers you can use um uh, what are they called binder clips if you have those but i like these tiniest little springy things bead stoppers they're called and there's different brands they have little ones they have big mamas or papas and then i have some that are nice on a little plastic thing i don't even remember where i got these all but um yeah so you can get them in packs of several the ones i use the most are these itty bitty little ones you just put your bead wire your beading wire in there and it holds it in place so that when you string your beads they don't fly off the other end some people just use tape but i don't like that because it makes my bead wire all sticky after i take it off so that's most of the tools that are my favorites guys um there are obviously loads more a uh, few things um, that are kind of important in your jewelry making um, a metal block heavy metal block this is a piece of uh, leather i got from beadalon some time ago um, usually you can get a square block and a hammer um, now if you're a beginner or if you just want to make earring wires all you need is a, like a rubber or plastic mallet this is a plastic mallet number two it's called i don't know and you do need a block though and this needs to be cleaned it's pretty getting pretty grimy now i was taught also use one side of your block for non-precious metal and the other side for precious metal this is not my number one block and i haven't used it for a little while what i mostly use it for is to work harden wire especially ear wires if i just create an ear wire you tap them gently um, to harden the wire so that they're not so bendy when they go through your ears um, and i think that makes them more professional made and better for people to wear so i tend to do that with all my ear wires that i make is i i do the cupper thing on the end of the wire and i tap them to make sure they're nice and flat and work harden them a little bit so they don't bend all over now if you want to flatten your wire then you need um this is like a ball peen hammer you need a flat and and there's all kinds of hammers and this one's not a very good one because it's actually peeling here i just noticed so that's kind of bizarre but anyway you want a better hammer than that because you don't want this this would mar your wire this so i'm probably gonna have to get rid of this but um you need a good hammer that is sort of flat here and that would you use on your metal block and uh, let's say you had an end of a piece of wire and you may, wanted to make it into a paddle so you would hammer that and flatten it out and make it into a paddle but not this one can you can you see that this is a bad example that's a defect in this hammer and uh, i'm not i'm not happy about that so that's going to go bye bye um, i do have other hammers that are better quality so again quality matters i probably didn't use this very much and now it's already bubbling just sitting here in my room so that's kind of bizarre but this is a good one this has lasted a long time and i do use this all the time for if you don't want to shape your wire you just want to harden it a plastic mallet or um, rubber mallet would be a good investment okay and when you get into metal smithing and things there's filing tools there's um, buffing and shining tools there's like a dremel machine you could use or a um Oh, I forget what the one is that hangs on the hook and bring it down anyway um, oh I do have two more things I'm sorry these are these are not well they're not in my top 10 because you don't actually have to have them but 
a bead mat is nice to have because it stops your beads from rolling all over the place. You can use a dish towel if you're just starting or something like that, or maybe a, a chamois I don't think would have enough depth to it. But this is basically a piece of foam, fuzzy foam, and it does help your beads from rolling around. If you're going to be doing a lot of making bracelets and things, you might want a bracelet bead board. You can put your beads in here while you're designing. On this, this end down here, there are three um, grooves to lay your beads out and design, and then you can run the string through. And then, this is nice because even if it measures seven inches on, on the bottom part down here, it may not, when you get the clasp on, actually be seven inches up here. And the reason for that is not all beads are the same size. Bigger beads take up more room. Smaller beads take up less. So it's really good to have either a bracelet mandrel or um, something like this that you can lay it in and measure and make sure that if this would actually fit a seven inch wrist or a seven and three quarter or a six inch or a six and a half inch. Six is pretty small, that would be for, like for children. So that's a bracelet beading board and there's all different name brands and whatnot. And then this is a nice thing to have. You can take it on the go, um, not necessary, but I re really wanted to show you because it's by Bead Storage Solutions. It's got this foam piece and that's just to hold everything in and together. It comes with a beading mat, so nice. And then, you can see I had beads on it too and had it closed because there's little indents from the beads. <laughs> and then it has another, like a necklace beading board. You can use this for necklaces or bracelets, but it doesn't give you the measuring around the wrist for the bracelets. Um, so for example, if you wanted to do a necklace 18 inches long, you'd make sure both sides measured it starts at zero down here in the middle, nine inches up, nine inches up, and that would include your clasp. That would be 18 inches. You know, 10 and 10, of course, would be a 20 inch necklace, that kind of thing. And then you have little compartments to put your, your beads in, and then you could take this out if you wanted to, or, you know, do whatever. And this helps hold the beads in there if you're in a mid design and have to stop. Don't want your little ones or whatever to get into it. Um, there you go, and um, I bought one or one or two of these, and I use them um, now and then. I do use the beading boards, but um, quite a bit. But I have a couple other ones, so um, I save these more for if I'm traveling or if I'm going to need to close it up. So that is by Bead Storage Solutions, and I think that ends it. Now that's most all my most essential tools. Um, but again, the most important, a pair of round nose, a pair of chain nose, another pair of either chain nose, bent nose, or flat nose. Just some other flat inner part plier um, because you need two flat-ish ones. So, you know, one of these and then one, either another one of those or one each, one of these your cutters, your flush cutters. So you only need one pair to start. And I would recommend getting one that can get into finer places, you know, smaller places. Um, so if you're going to invest in anything, invest in a good cutter. And your crimping pliers, if you're going to do stringing, and if you're going to do memory wire, memory wire cutters. Really critical. Don't use your good cutters. And everything else uh, is kind of, you know, well, needles if you're going to do weaving. But everything else is extra nice to have, helps you make your jewelry. These are the most critical ones. Okay? Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please let me know and give me a thumbs up. And um, the next one will probably be on wire, types of wire, gauges, and jump rings. And then we'll take it from there. And if you have suggestions on what you'd like to see, please let me know. We'll probably be getting into types of beads, types of gemstone beads. Um, and in those, I'll probably actually demonstrate small tutorial, you know, projects kind of thing as I talk about the gemstone or whatever. And again, 
I am not a certified anything. I'm not a certified gemologist. I just enjoy making jewelry and I love, love, love gemstones. I have a love for uh, geology and gemstones kind of stuff. So that's it. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. And like I said, leave me suggestions down below. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.